Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Father, we pray even now for our, our beloved brother, Pastor Tim Stevens, that you would strengthen him and encourage him and grant him perseverance, that you would give him grace and even give him opportunities for the, the ministry of the gospel behind these walls. And Father, we pray for his release. Free Pastor Tim! Free Pastor Tim! Free Pastor Tim! here there's something else that he would tell you and so I'm going to be his mouthpiece yet again even if we win the battle for freedom the freedom to live out our civil liberties the freedom to live out the the supreme law of this land that freedom will not touch the ultimate slavery that every one of us is born into all of us come into this world born in sin we are dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2.1. And therefore we come into this world with a condition that is bent toward hostility against God. And all of the, the, the sin that we commit in our lives as we violate and transgress the law of God is merely the, the symptom of a deeper root issue, a root issue that must be addressed and can only be addressed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Preach it. God the Father created this world and He is holy and He is the righteous judge of all and all of us Hallelujah. on our final day will stand before God and give an account of our lives. And even if we didn't know the law itself and, and, and didn't know the righteous standard we would be held to, God has written the law upon our hearts and so we know in our conscience right and wrong and all of us know that we have violated even our own standard of morality, yep. even if that morality is below the actual standard. Yep. Yep. And so God in his mercy did a marvelous thing. Amen. He commissioned his son Amen. and he sent his son into the world. And his son came and took upon himself human flesh, adding himself, adding to himself a human nature that he would be our representative, the God-man on earth. He was born under the law, and he fulfilled the law in every respect, was tempted in all ways, and yet was found without sin. He was righteous in every word, every thought, every deed, and upheld the law of God and fulfilled all righteousness. Amen. And the people that he had come to, his very own people, they rejected him. They deemed him a a blasphemer. They deemed him a violator of the law. And so they falsely treated him like a criminal. And they put him up on a cross. And they believed that as he hung on that cross, they had victory. That they had ultimately co conquered their foe. And meanwhile, on that cross, the Lord Jesus Christ was bearing up under the wrath of God. Understand, folks, it was not the, the physical sufferings of Christ that were the, the ultimate cost to him. When he looked at that cup in the Garden of Gethsemane and asked if it could pass him by, he wasn't looking to the physical sufferings. He was looking to the wrath of God that would come upon him for the sin of all who would ever believe on his name. And so on that cross, he bore the sins of of his people in his own body. God the Father treat, treated the Son as though the Son had committed all of the sins of all who would ever trust in him. And once he had completed that atoning work on that cross, he died. And he went into the grave. And on the third day, he rose. And he is now seated at the right hand of God. And he is going to be at the right hand of God until the Lord sends him to come and conquer his enemies. And so now you have the kindness of God, this time that's extended to you to turn from your sin. And even the governing authorities, they have been extended patience in this time. But their judgment is coming lest they repent. And your judgment is coming lest you repent. If you are here and don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you need to confess your sinfulness before God. 
You need to turn from your sin and look unto the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in his finished work upon the cross, his resurrection from the dead. And if you believe that and confess him as Lord, you will be saved. And so I urge you this day, as an ambassador of Christ, be reconciled to God through his beloved son. If you would look to him and believe on him, not only will you not be disappointed, you will be saved, declared righteous, and have everything you need to stand holy and blameless before him. There is hope, but that hope is only and ultimately in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look to him. Let us pray. Father, we come before you, and most of all, we thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for his finished work upon that cross. We thank you for his resurrection from the dead. And Father, we rejoice that in him salvation is found, that no work could ever reconcile us to you, that it's Jesus plus, plus nothing that grants salvation. So we look to him alone as the one who provides us with the righteousness we need to stand holy and blameless before you. And Father, we pray even now for our, our beloved brother, Pastor Tim Stevens, that you would strengthen him and encourage him and grant him perseverance, that you would give him grace and even give him opportunities for the, the ministry of the gospel behind these walls. And Father, we pray for his release, that you would return him to his family and to his church. Father, we pray for our nation. Father, we're grieved for this nation. We know that everything that we're seeing right now is the, the symptom of being not right with you. The hostility towards you is so evident. And so, Father, we pray that you'd have mercy on this nation, that you would grant it repentance, that you would allow the gospel of your son to go forth throughout this land, and that you would reconcile hearts to yourself, even the hearts of the governing authorities. And so, Father God, do that, we pray. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your help. You are our only hope. Thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, go to shameonchandra.com if you want to help this initiative. And thanks so much for tuning in.